everyone, welcome to the show. My name is Amanda Ostrander. I am a teacher turned homeschool mom, and this is Raising A to Z, a place where we talk about all things homeschooling. And today I'm going to be answering the question, how often do we need to be socializing? So being honest, this is not a question that I've ever thought about. Um, and it's like, I know everyone's always worried about socialization, but I've never thought of like, how often does it need to be? I've never thought of it. I just, you know, I know my kids are being socialized. I take them out, we do things, they're, they're being socialized. Um, but then I actually had not one, not two, but three different people on different platforms ask me the exact same question. How often do we need to be socializing our kids? And it got me thinking, <laughs> is there a number? Is there a frequency? Is there an amount of time? We need? Like, I know, but I think it's more of like an intuitive no kind of thing. Uh, so, I looked into it, I checked it out, and I thought I can give you not only my expertise as a homeschooler and as a teacher, but I can also share some awesome studies that I found. The question is, how often do we need to be socializing our kids? And if you were to ask a public school teacher, they would say every single day. They need to be in school because that's where they're getting socialized. And I probably would have said something very similar before I started homeschooling my own kids, like before I left teaching, um, because when you are teaching, you are in your own little bubble. Like you're in your own academic bubble of like, this is the things that we need to do. And so often, because like that is not only we're trained, we're living in this realm, we have a lot of higher ups that are telling us how things need to be done. So we're living in our own educational bubble as teachers. And unfortunately that means that we're not always like thinking of like other things, like outside of the classroom and how things work in other ways. And so one of the things that a lot of teachers end up believing is that like school is essential to socialization. Like without school, kids are not going to be socialized. We know that's not true, A, because I homeschool my kids, um, but B, historically, school is a very new concept. Like most people were not socializing through school. They were socializing through other things, through, you know, running errands with their parents. They were going to different um, activities, parties, like kids were learning and socializing in different, different ways. And none of them involved school, right? Because socialization does not mean sitting with your peers at the same age in a room every day. That is not socialization. Socialization is learning how to function in society. And yes, one of the aspects of school that promotes that is that kids get to meet friends who are similar in size and age and they get to have people that they might connect with. They're put in a situation where they might connect with a few people. That is part of socialization, is finding people you connect with, which is great. But in terms of actually like socializing in schools, kids are doing very little of that because they're doing a lot of schoolwork. And then they only have really lunch and recess to socialize. And if you don't believe me, a lot of these kids who are chatting during class are being told, stop socializing. This isn't a place to socialize, you have work to do. School has this function. If you are in the public school system, that's awesome. But in terms of like a socialization agent, it is not the best because kids need to learn other things. The thing is school teaches kids a lot of things in theory, right? They're teaching them like, oh, like, there's police officers who are going to, so who are supposed to keep the peace and they're supposed to help us. There are firefighters who are gonna like come and put the fire out. They're teaching us about things in society, but they're not, it's all kind of more theoretical in a sense, as well as like academic. So school does do some socialization, but it's not the only place to socialize and it's not even the best place to socialize. And then we come over to homeschoolers and homeschoolers are always worried that they're not socializing enough because once you leave the system, people are telling you, A, they're asking you, what about socialization constantly? Um, what about your kids? What are they doing? How are they doing? And ironically, I do find that this was, the tone around this question has changed a lot. Pre-2020, I found that question came with a lot of like, accused, like accusatory language, like, what about socialization? Like there was a, definitely a little bit of like an attack on that. But since we're OG homeschoolers and we've been homeschooling since like 2018, um, I could answer that quite comfortably and, and quickly. Post pandemic, 
I find that the question, what people do ask it, it tends to be a much nicer tone and it's more of a curious thing. Like, oh, so what do you guys do for socialization? Like the tone has 100% changed. Um, and I think it's because so many people realized that like, there's not a lot of socialization happening at school and people are finding ways to socialize and connect outside of the classroom. And that that is way more important than the socialization that's happening inside the classroom. So yeah, back to our question. <laughs> My little side rant, I do, once we get over the, okay, what about socialization? Then the question, I guess, naturally for a lot of people, obviously not for me, because I never thought of it quite like that. But like, for a lot of people would be like, how often do we need socialize? So I'm really glad someone asked because it's literally never a question that came in my brain, but it's a really good question to ask. So how often do we need socialize? So I think we can all agree that humans need to be around other humans. It is important for our families. It's important for our family, our social structures. It's important for our society. Like humans in isolation are not, they don't, they don't develop properly and we have issues. The question is how often do we need to get together people? And so um, I will link the studies I'm talking about below so you guys can go read them. I'll put them all, all in the description. But there are studies that show that like too much socialization can be detrimental. Um, that like interacting with people too much can leave you very depleted. It can leave you with mental stress and mental health issues. And so while we want to make sure our, our kids are getting enough socialization, we also want to make sure that they're not overly exhausted, that they're socializing with people who are, you know, building them up and not tearing them down. Like bullying is a great example of like negative socialization. Um, and we want to make sure that, that we are respecting our kids for who they are. And I say that because I did have, some kids are gonna need more time than others. Some kids are gonna need more friends than others. Um, and that can change as your kids change and get older. Typically you're gonna see kids are gonna have a higher need of socialization once they get into their like teen years where they're gonna wanna like hang out with friends, preteens and teens are gonna spend more time with friends. That is a very natural evolution in like child psychology. But you're gonna have some kids who are more extroverted, some who are more introverted. And we need to respect that like when we're looking at this, that we're talking about our child specifically and what's best for our child. Studies show that most people need between three and five good friends. Um, like, and then beyond that, you can have acquaintances and other people, but like typically that is the number of friends that people need to have. Studies also show that anywhere from one to three hours of socialization, a, you know, a day is kind of what people in general need to be healthy and to learn how to survive and, and thrive in society. We want to make sure that we are respecting our kids for who they are, because some kids are going to have more social needs than others. And I see that in from two, two instances. One, I have two kids who are on very opposite ends of the socialization necessary spectrum. <laughs> I've got Alexi, who could be out, who is very much like my husband. Uh, she could be out visiting friends every single day and would love her life. <laughs> would be glad, would thrive on that. And then I got Zoe, who if she goes out too often, starts to literally have meltdowns. She just, it's just too much for her. And she definitely needs time to come and like sit and recharge. She loves being out with her friends, but when it gets to be too much, when she doesn't have enough, and she tells me, she says, I didn't get time to play today. And when she says play, she means specifically sit down and play her own game and kind of like de-stress and like have her downtime. And so I have to find a way as a parent that balances and benefits both my kids. Um, I will also say that sometimes your kids are not going to have the same personality as you. And I remember when I was teaching, um, there was one family in particular where they had a little girl who was very much an introvert. She was in my class and the parents were constantly on me to get this kid to play with more friends. She had friends. She had probably two very close friends in our class, which considering my class was like less than 20 kids, because it was in a private school. Um, I, I think that's pretty good. Um, and if they were not there, she would very happily join in with anybody else, like during recess and stuff. But they were very adamant that she did not have enough friends and that I needed to facilitate the making friends thing. Um, because they were both extreme extroverts and they all had the like, we had like 15 people on each side of our wedding party. And I was like, that's insane. <laughs> like, 
so we want to make sure that we're respecting who our actual child is. Like this little girl was doing fine. She was friendly with everyone. She was friends with everyone, but she had a couple people that she just connected with more and they would spend a lot more time together. But she wasn't unsocial. She wasn't awkward. She was just, she just didn't need that many people around her to connect with. And that's okay. That's just who she is. So if we're going kind of off of this like rough model of like one to three hours a day, of socialization, that would typically mean you need anywhere from like seven to 21 hours-ish of socialization a week, give or take. Yeah, some weeks you might have more, like, I don't know, there's definitely kind of a certain block at the end of May and June where we have a birthday party pretty much every week, at least one for like six weeks. Um, so like we were getting a little extra that time uh, in our year. And there are definitely some seasons where we just don't have as much. We had a very quiet Christmas. Like we had a few family events here and there over the Christmas break, but really like we had a lot of home days. Like, and it just was days where we, like, I loved it, Zoe loved it, Alexi kind of got a little antsy at the end. Like, and we, we just kind of find a way to balance that, right? So really I like to look at it as like, we're looking for quality socialization and we want to look for like, balance essentially we want to make sure that we're meeting our kids social needs but also like meeting the, the actual time needed for like education and academic things and all of that as well and when we're defining socialization like we got to talk, talk about like what socialization actually is socialization is not just playing with friends socialization is interacting with family members it's interacting with strangers as you're walking down the street it's cashiers and doctor's appointments um, it's learning to do all these things with all these different people and learning how to behave in all these different social settings. So for example, going to the library might be a social, it's socialization because while they're picking out books, maybe they're asking the librarian questions. Maybe the librarian is talking to them about like, well, if you like this book, maybe you'd like this book. Maybe they're meeting other kids there or other people and they're talking about what they're interested in or like what book they're picking out. Like those would all be social interactions that we cannot, they might only end up being like a five or 10 minutes, but that's five or 10 minutes towards your kind of goals of the day. So like we want to make sure, and like also socialization is going to be interacting with you. It's interacting with their siblings. It's interacting with grandma when she stops by. It's interacting with, you know, those are all social interactions as well. So the, all of that is adding up together. And then we can also add in things like when our kids go to co-ops and classes and different things like as homeschoolers, those also count. So for example, we take our kids to co-ops and we have two different co-ops that we visit. And one of them is almost strictly um, socialization. It's just for the kids to hang out and have fun and connect. The other one kind of like jumps between like social stuff and then like big activities or like field trips where they also get to be social. Um, so for example, some days it's just like a park day. Some days it would be like our vendors market and the kids are doing vendor sales and working and doing like selling their wares essentially. It's a great activity. Um, but then like the next week it might just be like, oh, we're going to go to this farm and we're going to go see the farmer and see the animals and all of that right and that would be with all of them and they still get socialized because of with friends and kids and the farmer and different adults and, and that's all socialization too so we're want to make sure that we understand like the full range of socialization and once you like start to think of socialization as that i think that's why i don't i've never thought of how often or how much because i have the understanding of like socialization is a very wide thing. It's not just hanging out with kids your own age. For us, we're hitting on average between 10 and 15 hours of like scheduled socialization time. Like, and I mean, by that, I mean like between like co-ops and classes and play dates and visiting family and then errands that are scheduled on pretty much a weekly basis. We're hitting 10 to 15 hours. Now, if I'm adding in things like you know, a quick trip to the grocery store, going to the library, like all those other little kind of more sporadic things or more spontaneous things, as well as adding in like family time, we're hitting a lot more than that. That is personally like, that's how I, I, I think we're doing good. Um, but 
we want to make sure that we're hitting like all these different like we're thinking of it in terms of like a wide range of things and then we want to make sure that we're finding balance in our socialization that like especially if you have a kid who's more introverted that you have like days that they have time to recharge so I'm that's one of the reasons why I'm such a big fan of like home days having at least one day a week where you can like guard as this is our downtime day and this is a day where we're not leaving the house if you have an introverted kid that's essential sometimes it might be you might need to have two days that are like that or three depending on your kid and like I said what how much socialization your kids need is going to change as they they get older when they're really really little going to see friends once or twice a week is more than enough once they get older maybe they're going to need to see friends more than that or maybe they're going to need to have opportunities more than what they did when they were like four and five because when you're four and five everything is new and amazing right so like connections and stuff it's it's very hard to say this is how much time you need but i think if you are looking at things as a really big picture you're probably good the other thing that i think we need to remember as homeschoolers is that we're socializing very intentionally the fact that we're asking this question just shows me how intentional we're being right because we're looking for opportunities and trying to figure out how many opportunities we need to give our kids to connect with others most public school kids don't walk around like public school parents don't walk around going, oh, I think I need to schedule more play dates because I don't think my kids have socialized enough this week. Like they don't, they're not thinking that. Um, the fact that as homeschool parents, we're cognizant of it and that we're trying to find ways to connect our kids with other kids and other families and other people and we're being intentional about it shows that we're focused on making socialization a priority and that if we're, if we're being that cognizant, we're probably doing it. Like that's the reality of it. So I always say, unless you're locking your kid in the closet, which you should never do, but like your kid's probably getting, as long as you're getting out a couple times a week out of your house and like seeing other people and seeing friends, you're probably doing more than enough, right? Like, you know, if you're going to church for two hours on a Sunday, you got two hours of socialization with your kids. If you're going to a co-op for two hours on an afternoon, that's two hours of socialization. If your kids are doing a gymnastics class, that's two hours of socialization. They're learning so much in these things, in these activities, that maybe we're not thinking of it as socialization because they're just like, well, these are things we do, but it's all socialization. And so that can change too. So that's, that's important. And how our kids are socializing can change as they get older. Like maybe when they're little, obviously play dates is a huge thing. But if you have like a high schooler, part of their socialization might be having a part-time job or volunteering because they're out learning how to deal with, deal with society. I worked as a cashier for many, many years through high school and university. Trust me, you learn a lot about society working as a cashier, like at a grocery store. Like there's you're learning a lot you're learning how to interact with people you're learning what you are allowed to say and what you are not allowed to say um what you really want to say but you can't say um so socialization changes it evolves over time and over like kids ages but the fact that you're asking the question and you're cognizant of it probably means that you're you're definitely doing enough and if you feel like you're not and your kids are always asking to see more friends or get out then maybe you need to maybe you do need to add something Maybe it's an activity. Maybe it's saying, hey, we're going to do a play date once a week and you're going to like invite a friend or we're going to hang out or being a little more cognizant of like adding a little bit more time. And maybe you have a kid who's saying, hey, mom, I'm really tired. I'm a little burnt out. Maybe you do need to like scale back a little bit. But a lot of that is going to be dependent on your kid and on your situation. So here's my final thoughts. When it comes to socialization, we want to make sure that it's intentional that our kids are connecting with a wide variety of people on a regular basis. We wanna make sure that they are um, learning how to behave in a variety of social situations and settings. And as long as we're doing that regularly, a few times a week, we're probably doing okay. And after that, we need to read our kids and see if we need to give them more or if we need to give them less. My goal, my recommendation, if you have kids under grade six, would be to start with like two days of socialization, like out of the house activities a week, and then add from there. Um, grade six and up, you might want to start with like, start probably start with two or three, and then you'll probably have to add from there. But 
if you're getting out of the house on a regular basis with your kids and they're making connections, they're seeing friends, you're probably good. You're probably doing enough. And you can always ask them, especially as they get older, do you need more? And have them come up with ways that they can be more social as well. So I hope that answers the question. It's a very long question. It's a very complicated question, but that is kind of my answer to how often we socialize as homeschoolers. Make sure that you subscribe so that you get notifications when I put out new videos like this. Um, consider becoming a YouTube member. Members get amazing bonuses. We get everything from uh, early releases to bonus videos and special videos just for my members. Um, and then you can also make sure you follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok because um, I put up a lot of really cool stuff there too. So thank you so much and I'll see you guys next week.